السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله إن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد All praise is due to Allah We praise him and we seek his forgiveness And we ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala To shower his peace and blessings upon the messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and upon his family and companions and all those who hold firm upon the sunnah until Yawm Al-Qiyamah. All those whom Allah guides, none can misguide. And all those whom Allah misguides, none can guide. And I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship in truth but Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is the slave and messenger of Allah. And the most evil of affairs are the innovations. And every innovation is a misguidance. And every misguidance is in the hellfire. Servants of Allah to proceed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sent down to the people messengers to give them glad tidings and also as warners. So that He tabaraka wa ta'ala has a proof against the people after, mess- after the messengers have been sent to them. The first of the messengers was Nuh alayhi salam. And the last of the messengers and the end of the messengership and prophethood was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, The Nabi of Rahmah, the Prophet of Mercy. Allah perfected his religion by way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So much so that it was considered complete. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had completed the deen by way of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam strove in the way of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala making apparent and clear the truth and making apparent and clear and forbidding evil. Up until Al-Yaqeen had come to him. Up until death had come to him. There was nothing that was left that was not clarified by the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To the extent that Abu Dhar radiallahu an, he said that there was not a bird that flapped its wings in the sky except that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us some knowledge of that. And when Salman al-Farisi was approached by the Jew 
who said to him, Your Prophet has taught you even the toilet manners. Salman al Farisi radiallahu an, he said without any shyness, Yes, even the toilet matters. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not leave us in doubt of what we should do when we go to the toilet. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was devoted upon his message to the Ummah. لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْكُمْ مَا عَنِدْتُمْ حَرِيصٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَؤُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ Verily, there has come to you a messenger from amongst yourselves, whom the people knew well. It grieves him that you should receive any injury or difficulty. He, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is anxious over you. For the believers, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is full of piety, kind and merciful. From his ardent desire over his ummah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is that he did not leave a goodness except that he made it clear. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not leave any of the affairs of the affairs of evil except that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had warned us of it. He clarified it. He explained it. He made the path of goodness clear and the path of destruction clear. It is he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who said, قَدْ تَرَكْتُكُمْ عَلَى الْبَيْضَاءِ لَيْلَهَا كَنَهَارِهَا لَا يَقْعَنِ الْهَوَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى It was said by Allah in the Quran regarding the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he does not speak of his own desires, it is rather revelation that is sent down upon him. So when someone comes along, and brings a matter which is not found, not in the Quran, nor in the Sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, nor were the Sahaba radiallahu anhum aware of it, or the Tabi'een. Then this person comes and he declares this to be the deen of Allah. This person has either directly or indirectly made a belittlement of Allah and his messenger and the deen of Islam. Rather, as Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala said, such a person has accused the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of treachery. Because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fulfilled the oath. He conveyed the message and he did not leave a stone unturned. So a person, a Muslim, a believer must be diligent and must be intelligent when it comes to the affairs of our deen, brothers and sisters. One must subject his desires to the deen of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala meaning he submits to Allah's Sharia and he does not submit to his desires. Not the way where they change the deen of Allah in order to suit their desires. أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله تعالى لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. All praise is due to Allah. We praise Him and we seek His forgiveness, servants of Allah. The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم in every single khutbah or in most of his khutbah that he would give, he would warn against misguided innovations. He would warn against the bid'ah. 
But hear this. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would give these khutab and would make these warnings in a time where, the, where there was no innovation. In his time, in his lifetime, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had no innovation in the deen of Allah. The Sahaba had not known any innovation at that time. Yet the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave it that much importance that in almost every single khutbah, if not every single khutbah, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would warn against misguided innovations. This shows, O servants of Allah, the great and grave danger of bid'ah. The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Abu Huraira radiallahu an said that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said قال سيكون في آخر أمتي أناس يحدثونكم ما لم تسمعوا أنتم ولا آباؤكم that there will be at the end of times individuals that will narrate to you things that you have never heard nor your forefathers have ever heard. فَإِيَّاكُمْ وَإِيَّاهُمْ So beware of them and keep away from them. The narrations that you hear from these people it did not come from Bukhari and Muslim. It did not come from Abu Dawood and Al Nisa'i. It did not come from Al Musnad Ahmad or Ibn Majah. Works of Al Imam Ahmad or the works of Al Layla Ka'i. All of these scholars and the books of all the books of narration which are known amongst Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. If you were to search in them, you would not find the narrations and the actions of misguidance that the people have come with. So, where did they come from? From these people's whims and desires. Aisha radiallahu anha said, Qalat, Tala Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hadihi al aya, Huwa alladhi anzala alayka al kitab minhu ayatum muhkamat, Hunna ummu al kitab, Wa ukhar mutashabihat, Fa amma al ladina fi kulubihim zayr, Fa yattabi'una ma tashabaha minh, ابتغاء الفتنة وابتغاء تأويله إلى قوله أولو الألباب قالت قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فإذا رأيت الذين يتبعون ما تشابه منه فأولئك الذين سمى الله فاحذروهم The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم recited this ayah to us Aisha said, It is Allah who revealed the book. And from those verses, there are the verses that are entirely clear. They are the foundation. And then there are others that are not entirely clear. And as for those individuals who have in their heart a deviation, then they will follow those verses that are not clear seeking by way of that tribulation and fitna and seeking by way of that hidden meanings of the verses as some of the mufassirun have explained but none knows the ambiguous meanings of those verses but Allah and as for those who are firmly grounded and established in knowledge they say that we believe in it. All of it is from our Lord and none will take admonition except the men of learning. So then the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, as Aisha mentioned, if you see a people following that which is ambiguous, then know they are the ones who Allah has labeled. So beware of them. The scholars of Islam have mentioned that this ayah and the words of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam regarding this ayah is referring to Ahlul Bid'ah 
who introduced into Islam that which the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not utter. They hold on to that which is ambiguous and they establish their deen upon that. As for those, Rasikhuna fil ilm, those who are well grounded with knowledge, they say all of it, whether it is clear to you or it is ambiguous to you, all of it is from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, and we will not follow that which is ambiguous. Rather, those who are Rasikhuna fil ilm, as Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned. They are the ones who Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala has bestowed upon them the knowledge, has bestowed upon them the ilm. So that which is ambiguous to some is not ambiguous to them, Ahlul Ilm, because of the knowledge which Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala has bestowed upon them. As for the ignorant, those who follow their whims and desires and intellects. They take that from the deen which they do not understand. Ahlul Bid'ah, the people of innovation that call upon this way, are to be boycotted. As for those who are ignorant and do not know any better, then we are ordered to be gentle with them. As the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was with those when he was giving da'wah, just as the man, the Bedouin, who had entered the Prophet's mosque, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and out of ignorance of where he was, he urinated inside. The Sahaba were infuriated. And the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, leave him. And he dealt with him out of gentleness, due to the reason that this Bedouin was ignorant of his actions. As for the callers, who know what their innovations are, and they introduce it into Islam, that which Islam is free of, and they stand on their manabir, calling the people to their deviation, and they are staunch upon their methodology, then those individuals, brothers and sisters, it is legislated by the Sharia, by the consensus, the ijma of the ulama, that they are to be boycotted. Their classes are to be abandoned and their methodology warned against. Why, brothers and sisters? Because they bring the affairs that are foreign to the deen of Allah and they try sell it to us as Sharia. We say no. This is where you stop. This affair of bid'ah has led our ummah to the saddened state that it is in today. This is the reason the affair is taken so seriously. Because its evil effects is that which destroys entire nations. And let it be said to those who have an issue with declaring that which is considered a misguidance and those who propagate it, then tell them it is none other than the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who mentioned Man ahdatha fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu fahuwa rad Whomsoever introduces any affair into our religion that which is not from it then it is rejected these are the words of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They are not my words or the words of a scholar from afar, but the words of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Brothers and sisters, we have taslim. We submit to that which has come to us with evidence. It is the sunnah which guides us and drives us, not our anger and our emotions. Our or the, tinnery, or the tyranny of the rulers or the unjust leaders. No, it is the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is what drives us, whether we find it bitter 
or whether we find it sweet. اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم واغفر لنا إنك أنت الغفور الرحيم اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم تقبل منا إنك أنت سميع الدعاء وصل اللهم على نبينا محمد